Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 74. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 140 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things, like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. That's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. Now, we are starting today talking about how many dings in your head there are, <laughs> sir. We're gonna have to talk about what is causing all of those dents and dings and scratches and cuts a little later. It was actually really bad on Thursday. On Thursday, there was a giant circle cut here, and I was just gonna go onto our live stream and tell everybody that you've been beating me with a frying pan. Well, the only thing is, I got some too. <laughs> I got scratches and scrapes aplenty myself and bruises. Okay, before we get into that, let's talk about the deals of the week that we know of. Yeah. So this week's flavor of the week for Keto Chow is... Not root beer? Snickerdoodle. Okay, now we are talking. Which we don't even have any Snickerdoodle. I, I don't know why. love Snickerdoodle. I think that if you're like, hey, I'm not sure about flavors and you want to go one up from vanilla, Snickerdoodle makes an incredible ice cream and it Makes a really good muffin. Really good. Yeah. So it's 10% uh, off and then if you use our link down below, you get an additional 10% off. Hello. Now again, people keep messaging us about like your code doesn't work. No, our code does not work with Keto Chow anymore to get the 10% off you have to use our link which is down below in every video for the last two weeks as well as on our website if you go to our website and uh, like go to Keto products you'll find all of our favorite products along with our links when you guys use those links it really does help us out it's what supports the channel what buys the equipment the lights things like that yeah. it pays for us being able to go to conventions when we have conventions. What are those? That kind of stuff. So we greatly appreciate you guys using those links. So that's the one deal. The other deal is this week, Perfect Keto is having a sale. They have not had a sale for a while. Which is crazy, right? And it's a good sale. It is buy two, get one free, site-wide on, on any individual product. So not okay. like the bundles. Okay. And so like, you can mix and match. So like cookies. And the peanut butter and jelly. And the peanut butter and jelly. Now here's the thing about the peanut butter and jelly. It's so I good. I mean, all their butter, nut butters are good. So Chris, a while ago from, from Keto Chow, sent me a message about making these. And I know you can't eat today. I can't. Or you can't eat till later. Well, I can't eat till four o'clock. But I'm gonna have one of these. Are those the Muddy Buddies? Muddy Buddies. Did they, did he nail it? Mm. Well, he didn't make the recipe, but. So, what you do, take a bag of pork rinds. Okay, plain. You take a tablespoon of peanut butter. All right. Or perfect keto nut butter. Yes. Put it in the microwave with a couple. Smells, your breath smells amazing. Put it, put it in the microwave with a couple tablespoons of butter. Okay. So you're gonna melt the peanut, the nut butter. Okay. The perfect keto nut butter with the regular butter. Melt it. Stir it all up, mm -hmm. pour it into the bag of pork rinds. What? From there, uh -huh. dump a scoop of your favorite keto chow. This is chocolate peanut butter. Oh, yes. Give it a good shake. And then you can also add in some allulose, some sweetener or anything like that. Wow. And you have, now if I eat this entire bag. Okay, which I totally could. 800 calories. So that's it's a little bad. bit higher. Now you can adjust it. But that's a lot. Yeah, you can adjust it. That's if I eat this whole bag, mm -hmm. okay? But you can adjust, like, you know, cut back the butter a little bit, maybe a few less pork rinds, maybe a little bit less keto chow. I know how you can instantly make it 400 calories. Oh. Share half of it with me. Well, maybe I'll give you some later. Okay. <sighs> Seems fair. Really good, but use the perfect keto nut butter for it. I want the peanut butter and jelly on it. Yes. So, perfect keto sale. I mean, it's almond, but it tastes really like peanut butter and jelly. Mm -hmm. Perfect keto sale, use the link down below. Buy two, get one free. It's the first sale they've had in a while. They haven't had a sale in a while. You know what else is on sale? What? 
junk jewelry at Hobby Lobby. I'm all about it. They're clearancing out like so much stuff. I got like a ton of earrings and things for like two, three dollars a piece. And you know I love my trashy jewelry. You know I love it. So you want to talk about what's been going on for the week? So I'm going to tell you right now, there's no pictures of food this week. No. Yeah. Because we've been really busy. You know, it, it, we've always talked about, and we always say, hey, we are so busy. We, you know, I hate we people work that like, say that. We, but we are busy. Yeah. But we work like four jobs, and we run our channel, and I have the landscaping, and we have, you know, church. like church, and like we always have projects Shipping. going on. So you know what would really help being busy? Another project? Add another project to your what life. What a great idea, Joe. <laughs> so, yeah, we love camping. We do kind of make fun of Chris sometimes for his glamping. I never and, and make fun of him. I well, love the idea. I make fun of Chris for, for his glamping in you his giant RV. You ain't making fun no more. For a long time, we have talked about the furthest I would ever go with camping, and this is not knocking, I, I mean, no. I tease Chris because he's a good friend of mine, but the furthest that I would go because I'm a Boy Scout, right? I was an Eagle Scout. I was in the Order of the Arrow. I'm a camper. You like camper camping. is like under the stars in a tent or, or not in a tent in a hand, you know, built lean-to out of leaves and sticks. Oh my gosh, I do that. no. Um, but <laughs> different story. I've always said the furthest that I would go would be a pop-up camper. Well, a friend of ours had a pop-up camper and they were selling it and it was a really, really good price. It was a really good price and it's the way that we you know, handle our finances is we don't buy anything that we can't pay cash for. Right. We just don't ever That's want to be in debt. Right. So a lot of times that means you get things second, third, fourth, 15th, you know. Right used and that's okay it's new to us it's new we've to us we've never owned an rv we've never owned anything like that and the air conditioning worked so that made me super excited right. i thought we can work with this had good bones so here's what we bought we did a thing we bought a thing right we bought this doesn't look so bad does it not from far away it looks it, it doesn't look bad, you know? You gotta look at the outside. It's in pretty good condition, and it's got good bones. It has good bones. Till you looked at the inside. Yes. And <laughs> it looked like a crime scene <laughs> of sorts. Yeah. Now, again, it's got good bones. You can see there it's got good bones, but it's got a bunch of stains and... Honestly, those stains aren't even mildew. What the stains are is Rust. rust. So what happened was, is we bought this, our friend's been using it, and he said, and looking at it, I'm like, well, okay, you know, all of these pop-up campers are known to leak eventually. It's made by Coleman, it's from 2005. The way they designed it, there's like these seams underneath of the roof racks, and eventually they start leaking. So I researched before buying it, because yep. that's what I do, mm -hmm. how bad could it be? Worst case scenario, could I rebuild the roof? Definitely, Which I figured out I could. It was a handyman special. Yeah. We knew that going in. You're a handy guy, thankfully. It was funny. His wife was like, I am not camping not one more time in this thing because it is But they wreck. said it wasn't pouring rain on them. Yeah. But he did tell me there is a leak. It's He thought it was coming from the air conditioner. When I was researching, like, it could be the air conditioner or though it's probably these seams that are under the under the things because there was no cracks it wasn't like beaten up by the sun which is a problem down here in florida but the gross factor was definitely like growing day by day right <laughs> our plan was to just fix the roof and then slowly work on everything else until i figured out what was causing the roof problem yes every single corner looked like that <laughs> Yeah, so we peeled off, there's like these plastic caps like on each one, they're decorative caps. Below those, all four corners where they've obviously bent the roof, and I can't imagine that it came from Coleman this way. No. But obviously the owner from before our friend attempted to repair a leak somehow with duct tape. With just one little patch of duct tape. Like yeah. tuck, duct tape, is, you don't even have to fill the hole. Duct tape is so magical that if you just put a little strip over it, then it's done. But like we said, 
this is a hand me down, hand me down, hand me down, hand right. me down. So we don't know what owner did this or how long it's well, been. We, like we this. don't know. We know it was our friends. But the thing is, is when I saw those holes, I was amazed that, that it wasn't worse. That the inside wasn't destroyed because the main ceiling yeah. is in great condition. There's no like sagging. There's no like, you know, big holes from a wet ceiling because it was only in the corners. And what was happening was the water was coming in on the corner, rolling down to where you saw all those rust stains on the canvas and then just kind of rolling down. So it wasn't dripping a lot inside and it wasn't ruining the whole ceiling. So this week, we spent most of the week working our regular jobs. And then every waking moment around the other hours of the day. Getting home. Working on the camper. Working on the camper. Obviously, priority was fix the roof. It took us a couple of days. Anthony and I pulled all that off. We pulled up all the roof racks to reseal everything. We In those corners, we put a bunch of like insulating foam, but a waterproof one. Then we filled it with a rubber filler. Yeah. It's all waterproof. Then we patched the seams with a rubber patch. And then we repainted the roof with a roof a rubber pen. I forget what it is. It's like, I forget what it's called. But it's got like a 30 year leak warranty. So roof's not going to leak it ain't anymore. Coming in. Well, so we're and, happy about that. Well, and you look at, you see my little elbow here? Super greasy because I put a lot of elbow grease into cleaning, cleaning that inside. thing, scrubbing. Like it's amazing what just deep cleaning will do. And if you are used to getting a lot of hand-me-down stuff, whether it's clothes or furniture or pop-up campers, you know, elbow grease, it, yeah. it's, it makes a big now, difference. It, it paid off. We, we got this, what, Monday afternoon, Tuesday. We Tuesday. got it on Tuesday. Yeah. Today is Sunday. We've gotten a lot done. Yeah. So this is what the outside looks like now. And we're not done yet. So that's what the outside looks like. Obviously a lot cleaner. Now those tarps that you see like over the end pieces, those are just emergency blankets. We're testing something out. So you can get these things for these campers. They're basically like solar blankets that will reflect the heat because again, South Florida, right? But could we? But do they're it expensive. Cheaper? They're like a hundred and fifty dollars. So we said, well, let's even see if this worth it. Like, would it be worth spending that kind of money to reflect the sun and not heat up where you're sleeping and that kind of stuff? So those are emergency blankets that we just have bungee corded on to see if it works. Yeah. So far, it's working. So maybe eventually we'll invest the money into the actual ones that are cut and sewed. But right for now those. we're okay. So. All we were supposed to do was repair the roof. Right. I'm kind of known to work on a project and then find another project to do while I'm working on that project and just keep doing a bunch of projects at one time. Well, Especially when it's raining, because that's what happened. It kept raining while we were working on the so roof. What, or even when it wasn't raining, it's like, is there a project that we could fit in while we're waiting for something to dry? Right. And I'm also all about things kind of looking pretty. So I was like, man, since you're working on the outside anyway, can we paint it? <laughs> and he's like, well, do we need to paint it? Not really. Peeling and I'm like, off all the stickers. Can we paint it anyway? Yeah, so we did paint the whole outside. We peeled off all the stickers with a heat gun, painted it. We are gonna make some vinyl decals to kind of make it nice. Can we have a Two Crazy Keto sticker on them? And then, we uh, started working on the inside. And believe me, we're going somewhere with this story. Yeah. So today is set Sunday. Yes, it is. Everything we're going to show you, we finished yesterday on Saturday. And we have, by the way, been filming some stuff as we've been going along of just the different work where we're at so that we can do one vlog of what it looked like at the beginning, all of the changes we made, and then we'll do it as like a part of a full day of eating and yeah. then talk about it. This is what the inside looks like now. Right now. So big difference. We put flooring in. That yeah. was a huge one. Well, first of all, we got all of the rust and the mildew stains out. That, yeah. that was huge. We took all the cabinets out. You will notice, I'll go back to that for a minute. No There's doors. no <laughs> doors on any of the cabinets right now. Because what we did was Rachel wanted to paint the cabinets. Well, the cabinets are actually wood, which is amazing. Yeah. But the doors were not. Well, the, even the doors are, you know, the doors are pressed wood, but yeah. the cabinets themselves are wood, but they've 
put over like a like a contact wallpaper paper. contact paper sticker over it. Well, the doors are pressed wood with that contact paper on it and all of them were peeling off. So I pulled all the doors off, we painted the inside and now I am currently making new doors. I've actually made all the doors, routed them. We just have to go paint them to put them on. Yeah. We did a new floor. Mm -hmm. What else did we do? Oh, we pulled out all of the other cabinets because we're adding a bathroom into it. Yes, because we need a turlet. With all of that being said, it kept me so focused. I was able to stay on track. I collected a bunch of money, which I'm gonna let Rachel talk about her jar. But I forget the money. Forget that I stayed on track. I am legitimately down six pounds. And this is not six pounds that I was sweating outside. Right. This is like- You've maintained it. If you want to go by that, I'm down like nine pounds. Because at the end of the day, when I go get on that scale after being in that hot RV, um, I would like be 10 pounds lower. But we're going to go by what did I weigh in the morning and then a couple of hours after that. And I am legitimately down six pounds. I'm down to 193 pounds. Pound and it. it's been awesome because this project has kept me busy. So, me on the other hand, this has really helped doing this day by day thing. Mm -hmm. Because unlike Joe, when I have a really busy project or I have work to be done and there's a lot of stress involved because let me tell you, being married to Joe, he'll be like, oh my gosh. And I don't know if the next part of that sentence is what a cute baby or the ceiling is caving in on this pop-up camper. Especially when you're in the middle of a project. You know things always cost double what you expect them to and it always takes longer. There's always, you know, you open stuff up. We were not expecting to have the holes in this thing. So I was expecting a couple of seam leaks, a little bit of caulking, we're good. You have moments of frustration and my response to it is not work harder and like let's lean into it like Joe does. My thing is let me go snack because I can't control all of these circumstances that are happening, but I can control what I eat and my control is I'm gonna eat everything. Right. So the fact that we've been doing this challenge and day by day when before my feet hit the floor, I am writing down what are my goals for that day. And so it is, it's non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm not eating until four o'clock, like would I like some of those muddy buddies? Yes, I would, but it is not four o'clock yet. Right. So, and that's on my, my, on my list. And it's been really awesome because yeah, I've been doing a lot of the cooking this week just to kind of give Joe it's a break. It's been Awesome, because again, we haven't been eating till eight, nine o'clock. I mean, and that was the only meal all day long because I'm just out there and she's like, come in 30 minutes, sit down, eat something. And Rachel has cooked most of the days this week and it's been awesome. It's been awesome too, because we've been like for a couple reasons. So one of the things is we're cleaning out our freezer. So I'm eat, I'm just putting something that is like frozen solid from the freezer um, into the, the kitchen sink and we're eating out of our freezer. So we're, we're getting rid of some of that stuff. Cause a lot of times your response when you're busy and working on a project is we'll just go out to eat. Right. So I think it's just better if you are busy, throw something in the sink. It doesn't even matter what it is. You know what I mean? Like in, in the morning. So sometimes it was sausage. I just grabbed whatever was there. So it was like a sausage hamburger, chicken, whatever it was. There's plenty of meat in There's our freezer. There's plenty of meat and we will make something work with it, mm -hmm. you know, later on. So, but because I had this goal written down, don't eat until four o'clock, a lot of times when he's working on a separate project waiting for something to dry, while I'm waiting for something to dry, I would go and start cooking the food but maybe I was cooking the food at two o'clock in the afternoon and putting it in the fridge for us to actually eat later. In the past, if I'm cooking, I am playing one for me, one for dinner all the time. Like it's a, one of the reasons why I'm always supporting Joe doing a lot of the cooking because I don't wanna be in the kitchen cooking. I'm not very good about keeping my hands out of the pot while I'm cooking. So this has been really awesome because there was no negotiation. Should I take a bite of this while I'm cooking it? No, it's not four o'clock yet. Right. So it's been really helpful for me. I have maintained seven pounds down since, awesome. since the head of you know this whole 
you know, COVID thing. Yeah. The COVID thing, I, I gained a solid 10 pounds and now I'm down seven and I feel great. I'm fit back into all my clothes again and it I feel really good. And I know this is an August challenge, but I think this is my life moving forward. Let's start off with our uh, inspiration. Oh, before we do that, let's take a quick commercial break. Welcome back. You like saying that, don't you? I love saying that. Oh, we didn't show our shirts off. Oh, that's right. Mine says, just a camping girl at heart. And, and mine his, says... It's all fun and games until somebody loses a wiener. I feel like you should be wearing this shirt, not me. But it's funnier with you because wiener. If you're new to our channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. And make sure you hit the little bell button so that you're notified. This way, you're going to hear... Rachel talk about like wiener jokes and sound like you were gonna say Rachel and then also Richard at the same time. No, R Richard. No, but <laughs> yeah, you don't want to miss her talking about ball jokes and mm. everything else. Oh man! <laughs> if you are next level subscriber, share a video. That's right. That really does help grow. Really the channel, bold, and we really appreciate it. Let's get into our uh, subscriber of the weeks. In, well, we, we, we don't know what they're calling us yet. Like the inspiration kind of the week. Like Monday motivation. Comes out on Monday. That's good. Maybe a Monday motivation. But I the, like that. A lot of people call things that though. Okay, well, we'll see. Let's, uh, this week's is from Shauna. Hey, Shauna. And Shauna wrote, I think the crazy is really come out in me. Question, isn't eight tablespoons roughly four ounces? Yes, it is. 7.85 to be exacter. And wouldn't that mean the fat grams and carbs would be relatively close? These pics are from my chronometer app. Something is janky in keto land. Look at the calories and the fat in these uh, as all I did was change the amount and the measurement. Eight tablespoons and four ounces. Wow. Well, unfortunately, what happens is that's the rounding thing. I mean, it's like you get the same thing people you look at with heavy cream and half and half. People look at like, well, half and half only has one carb. You know, heavy cream is zero carbs, and but heavy cream is like almost a carb. It's like just less, you know? So you think it's not that big of a difference till you start multiplying by the servings. Like how many people are only using one tablespoon of half and half? Rarely do I only use one tablespoon of a creamer of any sort when I'm using a creamer of any sort. Yeah, there is actually a lot more carbs in half and half than in heavy cream. But when you look at a serving size because of the rounding things and everything else, it, it doesn't appear that there's not that much. But when you start getting up there, I mean, it's like heavy cream. How does a heavy cream, zero carb on a label, turn into like three to four carbs when you get up to four ounces? Yeah. You know, it, it really things. And that's that's just what that comes from. It comes from the different rounding and everything else. And, and you know, are they using the weight or are they using a liquid ounce? Yeah. So that's part of it too. That makes a huge difference. But it is just a reminder, and it's why we picked it for this week's like Monday motivation, that- Something to think about. You need to look at your labels because, and then not just look at the labels, we always tell everybody, assume everything has just less than one carb. Right. Unless it's something like, you know, beef, <laughs> you know? But- What's for dinner? Everything's got carbs, like liver has carbs in it, even though it's just like beef liver. But when you get these things like spices and things like that, count it as a carb. You're not gonna hurt your, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You ate 10 less carbs than you counted in your tracking app? You're not gonna be it's upset. It's not gonna hurt you. You will be upset if you under count. Yeah, especially with stuff like heavy cream and spices and sour cream and cream cheese where you know, it says that it's less, it's like cheese, regular cheese. All cheese has a carb in it, but some of the labels are gonna say zero. It's the rounding issue. Every time you have an ounce of cheese, consider you that you've just eaten at least one carb. Yeah. Just gonna help you. We've got a few subscriber of the week. I'm so excited. Now, if you're new to our channel, please make sure you go join our Facebook family group. You know, we have over 2000 people in there to inspire you to share recipes, coupon deals, what else? Oh my goodness, just motivation. And you know, if you don't have access to Facebook and you wanna share your story, you can also send us, you know, an email to stories 
at twocrazyketos.com. That's right. And that, uh, you can share your story that way. I do want to give just really quickly a shout out to a young lady named Mia who sent us an email this week and just tell you how much we appreciated your email. She didn't give us uh, permission to share her story, so mm -hmm. we're not going to share her story, but I just want to say, I love you, Mia. Thank you. And you really, really blessed us this week. Um, we actually read uh, your email with our boys. Yeah. Uh, she just shared her heart with us and you just moved our whole family. All the times where, and believe me, it happens a lot, where yeah. we sit down and like, do we make a difference? Yeah. Why are we doing this? Maybe we should just stop doing two crazy ketos, <laughs> Maybe right? Maybe we're just loud It's mouth. too much work. Maybe nobody really wants to listen to us. Your email is what keeps us focused. Yeah. So thank you for that email. But yes, please share your stories on your on our Facebook group or send us this st at stories at twocrazyketos.com because your story is going to impact somebody. There's somebody out there that has gone through or is going through something that you're going through right now or did in the past and they're gonna be like, oh, well they did it, that means I can do it. Yeah. So we've got a few different ones. The first one, just wanted to give a little shout out to it's one of our first subscribers. Jason. Jason. And he said, it may be my 50th birthday, but I feel better than I did when I turned 40. Looking so handsome, young man. We should sing happy birthday to Jason. Absolutely. Ready? Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jason. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Thank you for sticking with us this whole time, Jason. So yeah. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. you. And you are doing incredible. You look incredible for 50. My gracious. Yeah. Okay, next one we have is Becca. Becca says, just wanted to share the first picture was the day I started keto at almost 400 pounds, size 34 pants, 5X to 6X top. Second was a couple of days ago, down two, down to 260 pounds. Wow. wow. 22 pants and a 2X top. Becca, you look amazing, girl. That oh my is gracious. Awesome. She really looks like she's aging backwards. She yeah. looks like a child. Yeah. Just an absolute little baby girl. Okay, then we have another one. This one is from Jeannie and it's Jeannie. long, so I have it up here. Okay. Um, it says, I hate when people say, if I can do it, you can do it. But I've learned now to really believe that. If I, a 74 year old woman with no gallbladder, a history of weight loss and gains, a cancer survivor can do it, then you can do it too. Everyone wants to know about the weight. Okay, I lost 115 pounds in 15 months. Wow. Effortlessly with no exercise. But what you really need to know is, I am off all medications. Wow. I won't bore you with the long list. I feel better than I did at 54. I have my life back and maybe I have my life for the first time since I went on my first diet at the age of eight. Wow. My last diet was at 72 when I discovered a keto way of life. My highest weight was 385 pounds. I've struggled all my life. I will never go back to the person I was. God has been good to me to allow myself to go down that path again. Yes, there were a few times that I struggled, but I kept my focus. I leaned upon my faith to hold me tight until that passed. I found each time it passed quicker and quicker. I'm closing in on my two year keto anniversary and I now allow myself a treat every day, uh, a treat day every now and then. Notice I didn't say a cheat day. I don't cheat. I make a conscious decision to have something off plan and I really enjoy it. Then I go right back to my normal way of eating. That's good. Much of my success is a result of immersing myself in the knowledge and encouragement. So I must give some credit and gratitude to the two crazy ketos and some of my other Facebook YouTube family because their posts have been just that. And if there is anyone that would like to talk, DM me and I'll see if I can give you the encouragement you need. You are not alone. Reach out. There are a lot of people that care about you and want to see your success. God bless you all. Jeannie. Oh my gracious. That again is why we keep doing this. And what a blessing. here's her pictures. Oh my gracious. Jeannie, you look so beautiful. And yeah, what a blessing you are. Thank you for making yourself available, for sharing your story and just being that encouragement. And I mean, definitely I'm a lot like Jeannie. I think leaning on your faith in this is, is part of that day by day thing that I have to do because it, it isn't just one choice. It's a million choices a day to do the right thing. And I love how she's you know, she's decided I'm not going to have a cheat day. I'm going to have a treat day. 
and it's keeping her on track and you're amazing, amazing young lady. And all of the medications that she is off and the thought that this is closure to being on a diet and being in a yo-yo state of mind since she was eight years old. Right. You're talking more than 60 years on a diet. Like right. it's heartbreaking sometimes to think that maybe you struggled with something for decades, literal decades. And what a blessing you are. Thank you for sharing your story. Like obviously I'm a hot mess now, but like that is amazing. Well, we have another one. So can you compose yourself? Okay, or... I'm going to try. <laughs> the next one is from Carla. Carla says, when I get discouraged about losing weight too slowly, all I have to do is look at these pictures. I turned 65 on July 26. It has taken five years to lose 147 pounds. I lose a few, then stall for months. My daughter has lost about 60 pounds, but when I consider how much my health has improved, I am nothing but amazed and grateful. My type two diabetes has already done a lot of damage, but I started on four diabetic medications, including insulin. I only take one now, mainly to protect my kidneys. Other conditions I have that have totally improved or gone away include um, GERD, fibromyalgia pain, arthritis flares, IBS, vision issues. I am in better health now than I was at 55. My daughter has eliminated her prediabetes and she will be able to avoid the chronic conditions from long-term diabetes. If you're discouraged because you are not losing weight, remember that your health is more important than what this scale says. Wow. Okay, so what hit me? Do you, it, do you want to see these pictures? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at this beautiful family. Okay. What hit me is as a mom, and that's our goal, right? Is I want our kids to be in a better situation than us, right? Like how many times do you share mistakes that you've made in every area of your life with your kids? Not because you want to beat them over the head with it, you know, or you want to like glorify the mistakes that you've made. You just don't want your kids to make the same mistakes you did and right. struggle for as long as you have. So, I mean, just thinking about, you know, as from a mother's heart to a mother's heart, you know, her daughter is not going to have to experience the pain that she experienced. And mm -hmm. what a blessing. And I'm so thankful that you guys have this to be able to do this together. Right. I, I, I cherish the opportunity, even as a daughter, to be able to, to share this life with my mom also. So it's just such a blessing. Thank you for sharing your story. And yes, you've had incredible results as far as weight loss and you guys both look amazing, but the health improvement, mm -hmm. oh my gracious. And then again, that is why we say, if you're not a member of our Facebook family group, please go join. It's free, Yeah, it's free. And if you don't have Facebook and you wanna share your story, even if you're not at the end of your journey, I'm not yeah. at the end of my journey and I'm three years in. Yeah. Share your story. If you're a month in, if you've if you've gotten off I'm of like, a medication after a month but haven't lost a pound, even if you've gained a pound but gotten off of medications, share wow. your story because it's going to inspire people. It really does. Let's get into some of the comments. So first one is from Krista. Krista said, I found you two about two weeks ago and I love, love, love you both. <laughs> Thank you. So inspiring. Thank you for all of your content. I love it all, but Keto on the Couch is my favorite. Thank you. <laughs> I have lots of back content to watch and that makes me so happy. I live in England and I love it. Wow. But we don't have keto products in shops here. I have to send away for it and you are so blessed to have access to so many keto things. I love this keto on the couch. The daily goals just released me from my own pattern of failures by setting monthly goals and inevitably failing at some point in the month. Then thinking, Krista, you are rubbish. Not anymore. I'm a daily goals girl now. Love you both. Two crazy ketos are the best. Krista, you are the furthest thing from rubbish girl. And but thank you so much for sharing that with us. And yeah, it's it's something that I have just discovered honestly. Mm -hmm. And I'm two and a half years almost three years into this, and really. 43 years, almost 44 years into my life. And I don't know why I have been always having a year plan or a month plan or season plan, but not having a daily plan. Right. The daily plan works really well. Even, even in terms of like meal prep, right? Like a lot of times, I can't tell you how many times I've done meal prep for the week and then 
Toss it out somewhere toss, during the week. Toss it out somewhere during the week. So I can make meal prep for the week and then write down in my daily plan, eat your meal prep. Right. Only eat your meal prep. That's and then good. actually follow through and not be throwing out stuff. That's like, good. Ugh, serious. Next one. Paul Benson, I love you, sir. Wanted to give you a little bit of lightheartedness here. Says, you all live in Florida and you can't take the heat? <laughs> I know, it's a thing. You never get accustomed to this hot. Maybe maybe lizards. I don't know, it doesn't bother me nearly as much. And the funny part is, I'm from New York. You were born and raised here. You should be used to 95 degree temperatures. Let me tell you. It's getting hotter here. It's not just that I'm getting older, but it is getting hotter. That was Rachel's whole thing with the camper. She's like, if that thing doesn't have an air conditioner. I'm out. I'm out. I don't want it. It's got to have an air conditioner. And the only thing is I told her during the winter camping, no air conditioner. But, you know, we have gone to different places camping just in our tent mm -hmm. during the winter months. I mean, it's not really winter. It, we have summer and we have diet summer. We have some, we have some cold days. During diet summer... There, there's a couple of days in there and we went camping one time and it was in the thirties. And let me tell you, that was delicious. Like I will camp without an air One of our last camping trips, and I think it was why it was one of our last camping trips was July 4th. Oh my. July 4th, not this year, yes. July 4th camping in South Florida. No. In a tent. Make a choice. Is not pleasurable. No. And uh, yeah, mosquitoes. And we were on the water, but it was just miserable. Miserable. Okay, next one we have is from Robin. Hey, Robin. Robin said, Ooh, finding hidden carbs is always hard. I'm two years on keto, and it's always very interesting on the new products these days. It really is. I mean, definitely Whole Foods will take you out of that like game, the math game. But yeah, there's a lot of hidden carbs. My my biggest one is probably seasonings mm -hmm. because I love seasonings and I can get myself into trouble like just seasoning it with- Even like Buffalo Wild Wings, which we love Buffalo Wild Wings. We talk about it all the time. We've got a video on it. You know, when you look at the carbs that are in the seasonings or the sauces, that's for a serving. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but when we go get our wings, we ask for extra seasoning. I yeah. First of all, I tell them I want them extra wet, so I don't know how much extra are they putting on there. Then I ask the girl, can I have some more to take home with me? And mm -hmm. we come home and dump more. And we also have our favorite sauces, the spicy garlic and their medium, in the refrigerator to add more. Well, even though it says like zero carb or one carb or two carbs, we know that's, that's for a serving, serving, which and I'm not eating. We're probably eating two or three servings. It's, you just have to be aware of that. Yeah, because otherwise, you. I mean, it's it's basically a, a condiment. Right. Condiments can get you into trouble. That's right. Next, we have Renee. Parrothead Renee says for the new segment, how about keto college with a K? Because you guys are answering questions and educating the masses. How cute is that? I kind of like, like that. that. I do like that. The only thing is, is this is like an inspiration thing. I don't know. Well, I don't know. This is more about them teaching than but us But Shauna teaching. gave us new knowledge this yeah. week. Yeah, well, that's why I said they're teaching. Yeah. And I don't want to take the credit because you're bringing things up to us. Well, I like the That, like, I'm not thinking about. I like the keto college because this week, Shauna was an adjunct professor. That's, I like that. I like that. I like it. Okay, next one we have Avalon said, how about calling it weekly inspiration? It is weekly inspiration. I like that. What but are I'm, we going to do? I kind of like the keto college. You like keto college? I, I like keto college. Keto college. Okay, down to two. Keto college or Monday motivation. Let us know down in the comments section, what should we call that? So we're going to have whatever they call that. And then we're going to have the subscribers of the week. And then after that, we have the comments and stuff. Yeah. So I really like Keto College. Keto College with a K or Monday Motivation. Because you guys are the professors. Because Monday, you know, we do Keto on the Couch on Mondays. Yeah. Next up, Angela. Angela says, we should be grateful for each day. Whatever comes with God and each other, we will have success. Rachel, I like writing on paper. It feels more <laughs> like a commitment because it's real. Thank you both for the real conversations that help all of us. Thank you guys for liking us thank you guys <laughs> for being understanding and having grace for us 
You know, man, there was for so long, even on this channel, I thought, man, I don't want to let my guard down and show people that like, I really, I screw up mm -hmm. and that I really struggle with this because I would see people not in my lane. That's why I'm like, I got to stay in my lane. But I would look around and be like, man, it seems so easy right. for other people. Why am I not adulting better? Why do I not have a handle on this? It's because, you know, Every leg of the race, I've got to do it in a 24 hour cycle and things happen in your day. Right. Like it's, you have to live one day at a time. That's right. Next up we have Boomer. Boomer. Boomer said daily goals are the secret to winning the health and weight loss marathon. Thank you for sharing. Did anybody else have a good laugh at the face that Miss Rachel made when Joe said bunghole? Bunghole. <laughs> Bungholio. It was so funny because it reminded me of Beavis and Butthead and you know, which took me back to like my childhood, you know, the cartoons. Did you notice that Bill and Ted have had another excellent adventure now? There's another movie coming out with Bill and Ted. I'm like, everything old is new again. That's right. Next one we have is Shannon. Shannon says, I love the idea of short-term daily goals. Of course we have long-term goals, but it's overwhelming and daunting when you focus on everything at once. Those daily goals will add up quickly in no time. Thanks for the reminder. I've got uh, to go get my napkin. Yes, because again, I love to use my planner and that can be like super official and make me feel good about myself. But halfway through the month, I may be like, where's my planner? Well, I guess that you need a phone. Throw out, well, I mean, yeah, you could put it on your phone, but like, you know, I may just be like, if I can't find my planner for today, I can be so bad about doing stuff that I'm just like, well, I guess I'm not doing any challenge today. So yeah, use a napkin, use an old piece of mail. It doesn't matter. Just write it down and keep yourself account accountable. You are the best keto coach that money can buy. You are the best coach for yourself. You know, all of the goals you want to achieve, whether it is, I'd like to spend 30 minutes playing Uno with my kids. I would like to read a chapter in a book. A lot of times, even those goals I approach, like I'd like to read five books by the end of the summer. Well, you know how you read five books by the end of the summer? One, one day at a time. If I make a goal like that, I may never achieve it, but one chapter at a time, I can do that. I did notice you seem to lose your planner a lot less than you lose your phone. It's true. It's true. I, I only got an Apple Watch so I could find my phone. Next one we have is from Patricia. She said, I Patricia. love you guys. I needed this. One day at a time. One day at a time. One. Now we have some from Facebook. Uh, Claire wrote, do you ever look at your newer clothes and your brain still tells you that is way too small for you to fit in, but when you put it on, it's fine or even loose. I wish my brain and eyes would catch up with my body. Amen. Okay, so about a month into starting keto for Rachel, the second time, because remember, yeah, she started two. keto. This is keto 2.0. She quit after a month. Yep. Went back to it, and so it was, it was the end of January, what, almost three years ago, two years ago? I don't even know. Almost three years ago. So it was the end of January, two and a half years ago. She, she came back on keto. Four weeks later, we go to Hollister, she goes, go get me a size six, I think it was. Yeah, four, four even. And they didn't have any, and I brought her back a two. I'm like, wait. And she was like, Smoking. there's no way I'm going to fit in these. I've only lost four pounds. Yeah. And I'm like, I think you're going to fit in them. And she put them on, and she's like, go get me the zero. <laughs> I could not believe it. Yeah. I mean, there's sometimes still that like my brain processes, I will pull my laundry out of, the, out of the dryer and be like, this must be one of the kids. And then I think to myself, no, wait a second, my kids are 19 years old and older. So right. this doesn't belong to the children, this is mine. This right. is actually my pair of pants. So yeah, go and check yourself. Also, if you're somebody like me, who for when you're 100 pounds overweight have always used like loose, loose fitting clothing, like basically everything came from QVC where it was like that material that like you could stretch it this big. Put on an actual pair of pants that's like, you know, out of fabric that doesn't give and see what is your actual size. It really does help. I like having clothes that fit now and also for people who are losing weight, as you lose weight, it will help 
constrict your skin right. because you don't want to have it where you're ending every part of your body is this loose it'll skin. It'll move it to the right areas. It'll move it to the right areas because your body before, it's like the, the skin goes wherever it wants, right. right? So it constricts it. It's good. Okay, next one we have is from Elizabeth. Elizabeth says, made the keto chow protein custard for dinner tonight. Oh my, it literally tastes like a dessert custard. This has to be cheating, right? Now, if you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna leave a link for it over Rachel's head. When we did the protein sparing modified fast, we were looking for different ways to eat very high protein. So we came up with this custard thing. And basically, you know, we have protein powders in the house. We yeah. actually have a couple of different kinds of protein powders, but the one that we always use is keto chow because we have a bunch of the keto yeah. chow. And I like the fact that keto chow I has like all of the nutrients. I like, you know, the, the ingredients that are in there. I like the acacia fiber, but I love the fact that it's all of the vitamins and minerals and electrolytes you need, you know, in for one third of your day. Mm -hmm. And so we came up with this custard because you can make it lower fat than eating a traditional keto chow. And it is amazing. We eat it as a meal, but you can just use it as a dessert. Make up a bunch of them and hand them out as desserts. People won't know. The thing I like not... about keto chow too is that there's a gajillion flavors. Yeah. It's not like vanilla, chocolate, and maybe a salted caramel. There's a ton of keto chow flavors. So there's right. a lot of variety. Yep. Okay, next one is from Dawn. Dawn says, I was out on my two mile walk today and listened to Joe and Rachel. I love that you guys share different things and why you would or would not recommend them, like the recent one with adjusting your fat and protein intake on alternating days. It did seem very much like a diet and I hate diets. Thankfully, keto is my life now. I do love it. Kudos for trying things out for us all to learn from. I thank you for saying that. We do try to like be a guinea pig. And honestly, I always really appreciated um, Keto Connect mm -hmm. for doing that. I remember they did the challenge where the they had- The sweetener one. The sweetener one. And I just thought, man, thank you for taking one for the keto team, right? right. Because like they tried all of these different things to see what it did to their body. And so we kind of want to do that too. Before people, you know, make those decisions for themselves, if we can see, boy, this just didn't work for us, and you see that you have similar tastes or experiences to us, then maybe we can save you some effort. Right. And both Matt and uh, Robert, Keto Savage, did the one where they ate like 4,000 calories a day to prove that like, hey, if you eat calories too much food, matter. like you're going to gain weight. And I've talked about doing that because we're, we're big proponents of some type of a total carb protocol. You don't necessarily have to be everything total carb, but like at least when it comes to all of the packaged products, especially being careful because they can hide things different ways. It's a different way. But I've talked about doing a thing where like I ate say 20 net carbs a day, but 150 total carbs to show what it would do. I'm not willing to put my body through that like all say, of them are. We talked to Dr. Barry about it and he's like, please don't do that. Right, <laughs> it's like if they've already shown that it is the truth and you've seen more than one you know, source that's doing it, you don't need to pack on the pounds in order to prove that it's right. true. Next one we have is from Samantha. Samantha says, I just don't understand why so many people have issues with treats. If they are keto, they fit in my goals and I want a daily treat, why is that an issue? I'm not binging like I would on the crap I used to, eat. I'm not cutting out healthy foods to make sure it fits into my day. It just always fits into my day. I want one and I will have one. If I go back to cutting out things I want, I'm essentially going back into a restrict cycle of my eating disorder, which will only result in disaster. So I actually answered this on um, the comment section, but I just wanted to address it because it is a good point and people ask that all the time and they're like, well, I don't understand. Like if they're out there and you know, you guys talk about them, like what's so bad about it? It's not necessarily that they're bad. It's that everybody's on a different journey. Some people, us included, have a lot of addiction issues. Some people's addiction issues are more than others. You know, so there are people where if they see a cookie, they're going to go binge them. I mean, and let's face it, 
corporations spend millions and millions of dollars to figure that out, right? They used to have the subliminal messages. They still do, like, when you used to go to the movies. Smoke. Right? <laughs> you know, the smoke ones, or, like, when you go to the movies and the popcorn, and they pump popcorn smells in. Let's all go to the lobby. Right? They spend millions of dollars on getting you to buy their products by sight, by sound, by smell, and everything else. Well, They're sometimes great. it triggers us to want to eat that stuff. And they, I mean, there are people where Anthony had like a box of Pop-Tarts in the back somewhere and it showed up in our video and people would message being like, that triggers me. Can you yeah. make sure it's not in the video? Yeah. Now we're not eating it, but sometimes just the sight triggers people. So when it comes to the different keto snacks, even making them at home, for some people, it triggers them. They can't have just one. Rachel's a great example of that. Yeah, I am definitely a slippery slope. I can fall down a well like pretty quickly when it comes to keto treats to the point that you see one of the, the snack boxes where they smash the box really and like eat the all of the things that are inside the box. I have to have Anthony sit in for me for right. that. You know, I mean, it's worked out well because I think it's been nice to have a perspective of somebody that's not keto and be right. like, is this actually- and Anthony likes doing it. Does this taste good? But it's because I can't eat all the treats in the box at once because then I'm gonna lose a week. I just am. And I know that there are some amazing people, for instance, that could say, hey, I set a goal in January and that's a year long goal and I'm gonna do it every day. There are some people who can do it for a season. There can be somebody that does a monthly challenge, a weekly challenge, but as I've proven, pretty much a 24 hour challenge is about all I can absolutely 100% keep. And that's just my life. And that's, that's one me. of the reasons that we actually started like, and we don't even do it every week anymore, like our dessert day, because you know, we would get to the point where we were having like keto ice cream or something. And then it was like a daily occurrence for weeks at a time. And so we just decided, let's put this in its place. A dessert supposed to be a treat. And again, everybody's different. Also, you know, there are some people where even though it is a keto treat, it's a keto sweetener, it still affects their metabolism. Some people's metabolisms are so screwed up, they can't have allulose, they can't have erythritol, they can't have stevia, which is completely zero total carbs because it affects their metabolism. So everybody is different. And like Dr. Sai says, like a lot of people have an issue, you know, yes, it's a keto brownie, but that keto brownie gives you that taste and then eventually, you're going to switch over. Oh, I don't have any keto brownies, but there's a cosmic brownie right over there. Let me eat one of those. Yeah, so I mean, if it's something that works for you, like we're certainly not the keto police and we're not trying to take anything from you if that works for you, but there's there's a lot of different people on this keto journey. Obviously, like I do not look like, you know, keto savage. Right. And we'll never, and we're both keto, and, so. And we have them, but we've just tried to put them really in their place. And and so that's what, you know, you have to, you have to figure out what is it that triggers you and where can I put it? Like, I'll even tell Rachel, Rachel has said in the past, like, I'm never having another sweet again. I'm like, well, here's the problem. Like. That's not gonna happen. It's probably not going to just happen because moment. I know your personality and everything else. So I'm like, what if we make it once a week? Or what if we say like, you can have, a piece of chocolate this this big and that, then you know at least I get this much. Because I- Then you don't binge on it, like trying to be a secret. Cause that's my thing. Like, oh, well, we're not supposed to have it. So let me put it somewhere else and then nobody knows. But if I know I can have that yeah. every day, I'm good. Because I do get the whole like deprivation mentality. Like mm -hmm. it, I, I think you have to create some space, you know, for, for different things. Like what is that fence gonna be around, right. you know? It's all or different. find a substitute. Like, yeah. you know, some people substitute, I, I don't like bread anymore, but I'm gonna have a sweet. Or, you know, I drinks, right? Can't oh, have yeah. can't have soda anymore. I'll drink more coffee. Find something that can switch Help your you. mind over and say, like, I can't have this, but look what like my thing is this. No, I don't eat pasta anymore. No, I don't eat bread anymore, but I can eat a lot of bacon. I can eat a lot of bacon. So. Well, that is gonna be the last comment for today. We greatly appreciate all of you guys sticking with us, watching our Keto on the Couch. We love Keto on the Couch every week and talking about what's going on in our lives. I love the pop-up, but you guys are the ones that make us happy campers. That's right. Guaranteed. If you like seeing all of these different types of videos, check out our complete playlist of all 74 Keto on the Couches by clicking right down there. 
Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you can find right over here. But whether you click this or you click that, don't forget to do this. Subscribe to our channel, hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.